What up? We're back. Can you believe it? They didn't cancel the show yet, even though all those things I said about Kate Middleton. I'm so profoundly sorry, Kate Middleton. Not that sorry, but I'm a little bit sorry about the things that I said. Um, anyway. I regret nothing. I regret nothing. Also, am I the only one for like a split second? Just for just a split second. I was waiting for everybody to question the validity of this video. I was like, so we're not gonna. No one's gonna question. No one's gonna say AI. Yeah. I think. I think the only reason people didn't was because it's so. <laughs> people heard. People heard the word cancer, and they were like, oh, and they. And they were like, okay, sorry. I can't anymore. I don't. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Um. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, my apologies, Kate Middleton. On today's episode, we're discussing a bunch of different things. Um, there's some stuff in the news with Ron DeSantis, who we love as uh, a guy that we love, obviously. Um, <laughs> but but the first thing we're going to talk about today is this new documentary, um, Quiet on Set, which is about Nickelodeon in the 90s and early 2000s and all the horrible stuff that was going on. Uh, behind the scenes with child abuse uh, that was rampant there. Um, but I thought the reason that it would be interesting for us to talk about this, um, beyond the fact that people are sort of interested in it, I know, but I actually think the conversations have been really interesting as as two people who have represented people going through the criminal system. You know, I think it's been sort of interesting to see some of the conversations about um, – what punishments should be people writing letters uh, on behalf of people who are going through like a mitigation process. Uh, and then also just even people who themselves were victims of abuse and then yeah. the cycles of abuse. In this case, I'm talking about Drake Bell, but I think all of that is super relevant. And I actually think you and I will probably have unique perspectives on some of this stuff that other, that people aren't necessarily going to hear yeah. somewhere else. Um, so that's also why I wanted to talk about it. Besides the fact that Dan Schneider is one of the most evil men who's ever lived. <laughs> and I thought I, we should talk about him. You know what I think is interesting? I so I wasn't surprised by very much in the documentary because I follow Alexa Nicholas, who I, I've been subscribed to her YouTube um, and her social media, who was one of the stars of Zoe 101. And she played Nicole. She's in the documentary, but she's been like a vocal activist trying to shed light on Dan Schneider and all the shit happening at Nickelodeon for years. And you know what I, I think is interesting, right? I've been watching her YouTube. She does regular live streams. She calls out the Nickelodeon stuff all the time. Like, this is basically like a constant ongoing thing with like other people on Nickelodeon treating her like shit, like the Zoe 101 cast and the, and the Ned, Ned's the Classified Schools of Apple Cad cast and like Christy, Ro Christy Carlson Romano has this little podcast network that she hosts all those people's podcasts on and they all be treating her bad because in their mind, she's fucking up the nostalgia bag because she keeps like drawing light and attention <laughs> So, what's happening. so what I yeah. think is, is is how when public when when the public is truly made aware of something when something happens in a documentary suddenly like um the tides turn on something because it's not like she hasn't been saying these things and she hasn't been saying it publicly and she hasn't been saying it on podcast on podcast but now that way more people know than who are looking and hearing now you see these people who have been shaming her for months and treating her bad trying to like act on board like did you see the nasty classified school survival guys with like Devin who started in and played Ned he was on live like mocking yes mocking. yes <laughs> I saw yeah I saw that <laughs> that like so and then they came out and they apologized because the internet in the internet stoned them but that's the thing they do like I swear to you they've done like they do things like that kind of semi-regularly to her like not like so when I seen it, I just was like, okay, so we're gonna, it really proves how different these people are because I remember just months ago, one of the kids, one of the guys who played like Logan and Zoe 101 sent like a bunch of emails. She like went through his emails where he was like defending these people and sure. being like all oh, whining and blah, blah, blah. And they shouldn't have done this. Like they all, they're all being that victim blaming type shit. Like if you saw what Kyle and Christopher Massey's mom said, you saw that? Yeah. What, yeah. Wait, no, sorry. What was that? Kyle and Christopher Massey's mom. So Kyle Massey was who was on Battle Raven and Christopher Massey was on, who was on Zoe 101. Uh, their mom came out after the documentary and put out on her story. She was like, 
she basically was like, fuck all them hating ass people talking about Dan Schneider. Dan Schneider did a great thing for my sons. He got my sons, my sons a job. Yeah. And mind you, both sons have like accusations. Like Kyle Massey, I, I I'm not somebody. I, I will say this: I'm not going to speak up really on their on people's accusations the way that they're talking about online because there is a popular thing on the internet with when someone is accused of something, people go to the worst conclusion. They don't care how the cases pan out. They don't care about what information around it. It's just like okay, this person is abuser. This is this. This is more convenient to dunk on people in that way. But I have Kyle Massey had been accused of something. I want to say with um an under an underage girl accused him of something, and I think. Kyle Massey has been accused of uh, Christopher Massey's been accused of domestic violence, but in Kyle Massey's case, I've seen um, and I haven't looked too too deeply into it. I've seen a video with Kyle Mass that Kyle Massey himself had been like the victim of abuse when he was a kid, and he alleges sure. that it's a more complicated situation. So I don't know all the facts, but I do know that there are multiple of these Nickelodeon stars that have been associated with some weird shit with kids who also claim to have been the victims of some weird shit. Yeah. Yeah, I, be- I believe it. Yeah, when I watched it, I also was not shocked because I feel like it's been something that's been talked about. It's been like an open secret for many years that this that this stuff happened. Um, but but also Dan Schneider just looks like a pedophile. Like if I'm <laughs> being honest, like most clockable pedophile I've ever seen. No, I'm, I'm kidding around. But um, but not really. Uh, I didn't know Dan Schneider's name and his face. Like, yeah. I didn't know who that guy was. And then when I watched this documentary, I'm like, oh, he was in so many skits over the years. He was in nope. all the shows. He was he played a character. Recommend, uh, recognize like like a uh, n- nasty ass Brian Peck. Like pickable. At- Suddenly, yeah. when they well, remember him. Yes, or yes, him. yes. And the thing is. When you're, you know, I'm in my early 30s, so I came up on all that, and I came up on the Amanda Bynes show, um, yes. Amanda show, and so I remember a lot of these people, and obviously the kids who are who are now adults, and many of them are in this documentary, um, and even when I was a kid, I mean, Nickelodeon was weird, right? It was kind of the edgy version of kids television it had that feel to it but even as a child i think i had some understanding of this is kind of weird like this is sort of strange the stuff that they do it's really gross but when you're a kid you don't necessarily think like oh all the adults that are in the writer's room writing that so like it becomes so much more sinister (laughs) when you put adults into the mix of this just on just on its face it's so gross and like god will never forgive them for the foot you know like the foot was like on the nickelodeon like nick studios had like a giant foot on it i don't know if aaron could find a picture of it (laughs) but there's just like literally a a giant foot and this dude was obsessed with feet i felt i felt so bad for the 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 creative team who weren't aware that it's weren't a part of this weird shit because i i follow like some youtubers that do like the deep dives on nickelodeons and cartoons i'd be i'd be watching these things and nickelodeon (laughs) Nickelodeon had had, like, funny enough, before Nickelodeon became what our generation specifically sees it as, Nickelodeon had been, like, the dead network for kids. They had been, like, Nickelodeon, their original logo um, had been boring, like, this, like, boring thing. They kept, like, trying to rebrand it for a long time to make it interesting to kids, but it was originally, Nickelodeon was the boring channel that parents wanted their kids to watch, but kids themselves didn't like it all. The logo, like, think about what Nickelodeon, what that even sounds like. It was like, it was this boring, old-timey looking logo. The stuff was old-timey, and then they had basically um, this, like, intentional renaissance. They had hired this team, and this team went and, you know, rebranded the logo and came up with, like, Nick and the splat and the feet and all, you know what I mean? And this to be fun, like, to be, like, pretty and cool and appeal to us. And then now niggas like Dan Schneider... fucked it up for everybody <laughs> and I, yeah and i and i also like there's amazing creative people i don't want to like besmirch the entire brand of nickelodeon they made amazing cartoons in the 90s uh you know like doug, doug funny ren and stimpy um rugrats right. uh like classic cartoons that that ah real monsters was one of my favorites like of all time um yeah. that obviously impacted other creators later like they did amazing stuff but clearly they had these people who were deeply involved in the creative process for live television 
who are those. doing horrible, horrible things to the extent where it's like if Chuck E. Cheese is Las Vegas for kids, Nickelodeon is like Jeffrey Epstein for kids. Like that's <laughs> that's that's what it was in the 90s. You know what's the thing? I like I don't even I can't like yes we have to blame Nickelodeon, but I I, I guess I want to blame the larger culture right because this is not the first time we've seen something or we've learned of something that in our in our lifetime or our childhood all the adults were okay with right like that was happening it, and it's because the thing about Nickelodeon it, all the things that you're seeing right when you look at 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 the things they were doing like sexualizing young girls and blah 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 and all this and sexualizing boys and yada yada. And- those are all things that to this day the, the 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 society at large does not frown upon. Like they don't care. They're those low boy yeah. rappers. They be there um, with with the grown women. People don't have a problem with that when they see it. Like little like girls being sexualized or boys being put in positions to to sexualize girls and women and yada yada. They don't have an issue with that. They only the only time they start like uh, feeling the need to have censorship and protecting children from sexuality and blah 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 is if it has anything to do with LGBTQ stuff. Yes. Like, Yes. To me, and, that is the larger reason you don't see like there there is kind of this mass consent to stuff like this, right? Like I to me it the, the greater problem is not us being shocked. Like our generate like us as adults, we're like like we see it very clearly. The the the, the greater problem to me was the parents and the adults and all the people that were seeing Dan Schneider next to Amanda Bynes as a in a in her fucking swimsuit and jacuzzi. They're like, Yeah, yeah, this is fine. Like But I wanna say <laughs> I do want to say though, justice for Brian Stern's mom. Justice for Brian Stern. And justice for Brian Stern's mom. She was like the one of the only parents who was just like. And I figured you probably loved her, being like, yeah. "What the fuck is going on here? Like, I don't want this guy around my kid." You know, uh, I, I got the impression in the documentary that. Oh, sorry, Hearn, Hearn, Brian Hearn, Brian Hearn, not Brian Stern. Brian Hearn. I, I got the impression in the documentary that they didn't let the black people, they, they, they cut off them complaining about race or like it pointing yes. out how they, it was very clear to me. Yes. They cut it out because like Giovanni was there. First of all, let me be clear. I followed, I already was following Giovanni. I've never tapped out. <laughs> I, I was still following G- Giovanni. That's my bitch. <laughs> like, I, I watch all these people's things. And when you like hear her at the end of it and she's crying and she's talking about beauty standards and what that experience had on it, it's very clear that she told a much larger story, but her story had a lot to do with how she was, they were being treated as the black kids there. And that it seemed like the network was like for quite a second, they're like, stick, stick, stick to the sexual assault. Sex and sexual assault, there ain't nothing wrong with a good little bit of good old fashioned racism. <laughs> like they, they had no choice. It felt like they had no choice but to leave the race stuff in there to be able to talk about what the two black boys were talking about with their experience because it was so intertwined. But feel like G for Giovanni's, they were like they, they barely. It's crazy because they really did barely touch on it at all, and it was only contextualized by the men themselves talking about their experience. Like they're like, oh yeah, if they had a skit where I was acting like I was basically a crack dealer, but I was selling uh, Girl Scout cookies to Frankie Munez. And his mom is in the is also in the interview, and she's saying, like, they're having my son be a crack dealer. And it's only contextualized by them. But nobody, like, no one else is like, oh, yeah, I was racist. And remember, <laughs> I texted you when I was watching it, and I'm like, it's bad enough to be a pedophile, but you're also a racist pedophile. Like, what the fuck? Which is... <laughs> <laughs> I, I have definitely experienced, I had a, I had a, a high school, there was a high school, a teacher um, in my high school that very much so was, he was obviously that, right? There were, there were rumors throughout high school about him, like, um, doing different stuff with the girls or inviting different, like, older girls over to his, his place. But the thing is, he only liked white girls. So it was like, I was in a class with him where he would actively like, he's flirting with the white girls, he's sexualizing the white girls, he's giving them like special treatment and all that. And he's over there like, to me like, <laughs> like no, no, I was like, mm. you know, you can't complain. Like, cause you're like, how are you gonna complain that? I realized my teacher is a, a racist because he's providing sexual preferential treatment to the white girls. So it's like, hmm, which one, which one comes first and being a racist? <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, yeah it was it was pretty wild how clearly racist they were 
towards all the black cast members. There's one sketch that um, it wasn't Hearn. It was I, I forget the other guy's name, but he talked about where he was like the first rapper and it was he was little fetus. Yeah. And, and that was also a lot of this, too, like where uh, Dan Schneider would write these things where the kids had to wear like skin tight leotards uh, right. and like suits and everything. They would always be in these really uncomfortable, weird situations for children on, on TV, like on yeah. national syndicated television. Um, the no, the no, like I was the like, nose, right, right, right. Very clear to me that they want to glide over the racism of this because they were trying, they were like, but the, the, the documentary itself is playing up the fact that there are these skin tight and how it's sexualized and the uncomfort. I'm like, but are you not going to talk about, the specific, the specific, all the black boys are being put in these skin tight things that are decorated with big ass noses and blah, blah. Like, this is some racist <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, it's crazy. I were literally, I remember it because Brian Hearn, first of all, I, I was, I was a child. I'd watch him all wait, the wait, wait, hold so, on. Wait, let's, so, I'm so sorry. I know you're mad at me for interrupting. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh my God. I was thinking of, oh my, I'm the worst. I'm so sorry. Uh, I interrupted you for no reason. Do you see white man? Do you see how the white man is? I'm so sorry. I just wanted y'all. I'm glad y'all got this real life <laughs> demonstration of what it's like dealing with the white man. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, excuse me. Wait, I need to. I need to set the stage here. Actually, I don't know who we're talking about. Sorry. <laughs> No, but I, first of all, anybody, anybody who, I figured they listen to us, they watched it. <laughs> like, they, <laughs> they, they probably watched it. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. His entire government name so they can look him up. <laughs> like, um, but Brian Hearn, he was, I, I remember his, his time on all that. First of all, I was a black kid. So all of the black kids on all that, the few, there would be one black kid. I know them all. They all, yeah. they're all <laughs> That's distinctly none of them were forgotten faces to me but on top of that brian hearn had also been in um he'd been in hardball do you remember hardball no that's how i know that you spent your youth being white you weren't like <laughs> that is so crazy to hardball you don't remember when hardball came out with keanu reeves with g baby and it's just crazy is this required watching now for me to not be racist Yes, okay. like that's so crazy, and Alex. You're so racist that you missed out on, <laughs> a, on your youth. <laughs> I know it's true. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, Hardball and Nickelodeon promoted the shit out of Hardball because on it had on the soundtrack and the, um, they had a song they made for the soundtrack. Remember, it was Lil's Times, and the song was called Hardball, and it had Lil Bow Wow, Lil Zane, Lil Sammy, uh, and Lil Wayne on it. Lil and, Wayne. Yes. Yes. Yes, this was real. And again, hardball star Keanu Reeves. So, so it's this movie. It's this white guy. It's a broke ass. It stars a broke ass white guy named Keanu Reeves who is in a bunch of debt from gambling. They want to. He starts out the movie. The people are trying to beat his fucking ass. He doesn't have any money to pay his debtors, so he runs to his rich white friend who says, "Hey, the favor I could do you is I'm supposed to um, be like coaching this this uh, black this baseball team of broke black kids. I don't want to do that shit." Can you fucking do it? Uh, he's in Chicago, so he starts doing it. He starts oh doing it. Oh my god! It's an inner city Keanu Reeves saves the day movie. Yes. Wow! I, I can't believe I've never seen this. I'm disappointed in myself. That ass. So I'm like, I'm like, this was the big, this was the height of like when they were making all of the white savior films when Freedom Fighter and Great Debate. <laughs> <laughs> so um they have Keanu Reeves go there, he gets he bonds with the with his team of black misfits and then <laughs> they get into baseball. Some inner city tragedy still happens. <laughs> but it is a staple. It is the first movie, like besides Titanic, it is the first movie as a as a kid I remember, like in the theater, weeping. Like that was the first time like, <gasps> like mm, yes. So mm, And maybe yeah. the last time. That you wept in the theater. When was the last time I wept in the theater? Definitely not I, during Spider Man. I'll tell you that. Well, I want to be. Oh, do you believe this? So I went to go see Book of Clarence with my boyfriend, who who was not into the movie. <laughs> in the last scene, when they have, did you watch Book of Clarence? No. Okay, Book of Clarence. He's like Black Jesus, right? Like, okay. Wait, it stars Lakeith Stanfield. It came on the. the uh, oh, Keith. I love him. Yeah, it's 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 a good movie. It has it has great great parts to it, right? At the end, they, there's a scene, they have him, like, he's getting crucified. Uh -huh. so, cruci I'm not lying to you. Do you remember when Passion of the Christ came out as a child? Yeah, I do, because my f yeah. mom. Okay, I, I lived in a concert. 
Christian nation, the Bahamas, they fucking went up for Passion of the Christ. Like my yeah. Grammy was repeatedly. I remember there was a time they were watching Passion of the Christ as full in the theater and the electricity went off. God tell them. Like, that was a God. <laughs> when this power went up. But anyhow, when they had the like, Keith Stanfield getting crucified in this movie, that was my Passion of the Christ. Because tell me why my boyfriend like looks to me to laugh because he thinks it's like the moment is funny and I'm <laughs> <laughs> it was a traumatic event for you yo and he was like he, but he sees me crying but he cannot believe that I'm actually like crying at this movie because <laughs> that's funny he be like obviously this is comedic <laughs> so when he sees me cry and he's like <gasps> weak like laughing hysterically in this theater so yeah, that's the last time I wept in the movies, but you should know I weep at a lot of things. Okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> I'll also say I was looking into um, Heron a little bit, and he's pretty active, like, he's a pretty active community activist person. He started this organization called Urban Poets Society, uh, and they do, like, they create art, poetry, stuff. Um, it's pretty cool. And I was, I don't know, I like that. It was like he... He uh, got away from the horrors of this thing and did some good stuff, it seems. But obviously, he lost his shot at the big time, clearly, because his mom did the right thing. You know, his mom was like, I'm not going to let my kid be abused. And that's that's also at the crux of this, too. Right. It's something you kind of touched upon earlier. Is that like the people don't want to speak out because everybody's making a bag right so right. it's like we have to keep our mouths shut because we might like lose the ability to make this money or i might um put my future career in jeopardy you know like amanda Bynes became hugely famous and hugely successful she's in all these movies as a as a very young person um but clearly eventually it caught up with her because eventually she had some serious problems, right? I mean, she's like had a conservatorship, which I know a lot of the, a lot of the times people there's controversy about that in terms of people's autonomy. And I, and I don't know any, and let me be clear, like I've not done the research on this stuff, but it seems very clearly that her experiences as a kid messed her up pretty yeah. bad, you know? You know what I, I think it really demonstrates, right? Is, let me be clear, what happened to Brian Hearn and what they did to him, they would have done regardless. Like, that's a, that's a thing they did to him, like, pinning it, pinning it on his mother, like, this is idea. First of all, I think it's important to point out him talking about how that fragmented the relationship he had with his mother, with his own family, because mm -hmm. I think that, that's important, right? Like, people don't talk about the different ways and how racism affects Black families and how it affects Black, your psyche, but all those Black children being made to feel like having families that advocate for them or their own, or their parents and their mothers feeling like, I can't speak up because we have an added perception as Black people is difficult and how we're going to be perceived. I think that's in, in, important to analyze, but also what I think the the documentary really demonstrated whether it was their purpose or not was how whose careers make it is predetermined right mm -hmm. like white kids were being picked Amanda Bynes is being picked like when they when they talk about oh you had to be the favorite well the black kids will never be the favorite of a bunch of racist fucking white people making the choices and decide mm -hmm. who gets to make it and that's why you don't see any of them getting it right and there was nothing they could do like in the same breath that they would portray Brian Hearn's family oh mommy is difficult or she's making too much noise the 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 black girl not Giovanni but the other one um who talked about being having a hard time just because because she was well liked even because she was well liked they're mad at that too like you're not supposed to be the one that's well liked why does right. everybody like you okay? right, so right. You're, you're if you do damned if you don't because at the end of the day they don't want us to be the star they don't want there to be too many of us we're meant to be the sidekick it's meant to be only one and that's why it was like that so no matter what he did he was never going to be granted the career they decided to grant an amanda Bynes or grant a drake bell or grant you know what i mean like yeah so all right let's Let's talk a little bit about the <laughs> – sorry. Guys, I also want to be really clear. Like, I don't think this stuff is funny. I really don't. I know how serious it is. I just – you know, sometimes it's so crazy to to say there were two convicted sex offenders that came from this show that they had on the show um, who were working at it on it at a high level. That's cr insane. Like, yeah. that is – that's crazy. Um, 
more than that, by the way, there were others too. The documentary didn't even it didn't even talk about. Yeah. Did you see the yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just full, you know, like just a production, a production that is full of pedophiles. Like, and, and you know, in it. What? Sorry. Did you see the one with Chris Hansen? No, no. A, like straight up video. One of the Nickelodeon writers was to, like that the, they didn't bother to cover was caught by Chris Hansen. Like oh my a straight god. Up episode. <laughs> <laughs> like it's straight up. So they at least in the documentary they cover two guys that they caught basically. But one of the guys who is the one of the main villains of this documentary is is uh Brian uh, Peck is his name. Yeah. And the thing that's no relation to Josh Peck. I looked into it. No re- no relation just to be clear. Um why are we but, killing why were people killing Josh Peck after the documentary by the way? I, I think seen, I don't I, had, I know why. I know why. Okay. But I don't want to talk about why. But I do know why. But it's stupid, I think. Uh, which is, I think it's stupid in general for people to yell at these now adults who were children that were abused, right? It's like yeah. whatever decision they make now about how they feel about this stuff as adults, the fact is they were kids then. They were abused or they were exposed to abuse. It is not any of our business. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, we're, we're talking about people who are in this documentary, right? Like, who decided to participate in it, um, who talked about what happened. I think, like, you know, people people are so weird online. They're like, I'm going to be, I'm going to go find justice for this other person who I have a weird parasocial relationship with, right? Um, because well, what, they, sorry, go ahead. Job? Yeah, that's what I want to know is what are they even upset about? At, at They're this? upset. Okay, so the internet, some people on the internet are upset because apparently Jenna McCurdy in her book, which is called I'm Glad My Mom Died, or I think that's what it's called. Yeah, uh, I haven't read it. I heard it's good. Um, yeah, she alludes to Dan Snyder in the book. She doesn't name him. And apparently there were uh, NDAs that people signed in order to kind of not ever talk about what happened and you know, whatever. I mean, like if I'm being totally honest, like hell I'll sign an NDA. I mean like, like, look, you want me to sign an NDA? I'll sign an NDA. But Matt, Josh Peck. I think people are assuming they're making, they're saying this person signed an NDA. This person did this, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I, you know what I hate? I really fucking hate the internet because they, they, they act like the worst aspects of the criminal system. And let me explain what I mean by that. Right. It's, it's the way prosecutors and police and judges and everybody acts like they care so much about victims or, or, or people in a community. Meanwhile, it's that exact same community that they're treating as the defendants and, and, and not recognizing that they're victims themselves and just sure. constantly because I'm like, what makes you think you have any fucking understanding of everything that happened, of everything that happened to what people's experiences or what, what roles they were in because you watch this documentary. So what are you going to do? Deify the few people that participated in and vilify the ones who didn't. And what I find and what I find ridiculous is like to me, this was really an example of how the things that I hate about Twitter and the Internet. Right. Especially when I see like people who otherwise say they're progressive or they're on one side of the aisle or come out against the criminal system or whatever have you are always the ones like enforcing, just enforcing the exact aspects of how we deal with the criminal system. Because Drake Bell is somebody who I've seen in, in the last years. They've got run with, even with this coming out, people who hadn't watched the documentary, who've never looked into the evidence or what his case was about were like, oh, like upset at the fact that he was getting like his story he was even being allowed to tell his story i yeah i mean i i agree with you about the way people deal with it online i also i mean this is one of those things where i read more about drake's case just because i wanted to understand the context better although i don't think it mattered from the perspective of this person was a victim of this horrible thing that happened uh, when he was a kid, when he was 15 years old, uh, and this guy, uh, Brian Peck, you know, did this horrible, did this horrible stuff to him for a, pe- a period of several months and, and terrorized this child. Right. Um, I don't think like he's in, t- you know, that was a horrible thing that he experienced that's real and extremely traumatic and undoubtedly impacted the trajectory of his life. Um, and so everybody is entitled to 
telling their story about what's, you know, what's happened to them, how it informs them as a person. And, you know, from the perspective of even looking at that case, you know, like I read the victim impact statement that she read when he took his plea. I read some stuff about some of the evidence, but the thing is, you know, it's limited. It's on the internet. It's like what you can get from online. And there are, it's not just his own account. It's not just his account versus her account. It's also, there were other people involved in the case who disputed the facts of what exactly what occurred inside of that case. Um, yeah. And he, you know, is he a perfect person? No. Did he do bad things? Yeah. He admits to doing bad things like, but like conversing with a minor. Like I, I don't, I don't condone, you know, the stuff that he did in the past, but right. the point is that they're just like there are no perfect victims. Um, there are also people who experience extremely traumatic, harrowing events, and it fundamentally changes their life. Like it changes them as a human being. And, and, and the I, problem is, is like the well, if the issue we have with the criminal system, right, is that it's not solution oriented. Like it does nothing to address how these things happen or prevent it from happening. Us taking the exact same system, but without power, you know what I mean, to 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 put people in jail. But it, otherwise, we're enforcing the same kind of thing, the same kind of thought process towards disposing of people. Or people are bad, or these are all evil people. We're still taking this sensationalized version of it. It does nothing to address the root causes because something I don't like is. We have this tendency, no matter how many times you learn about things like this, in not just Hollywood, but in life, right? The amount of times that you see men or people, men, women, and everybody, like uh, uh, there are lots of people who are accused of sexual abuse or some way or some kind of murky line or whatever have you, and they do these things. And and yet we all talk about it like they are these like boogeymen and in the closet somewhere like they're just anomalies like fucked up people that we need to like identify as abusers in this far rather than discuss if this is this prevalent if this is as prevalent as it is why don't we take a step back and, and maybe understand how otherwise what we are teaching in our society we are is causing this right like the way the the way that people are responding because I'll, you ever notice, you'll see all these, um, who was that guy that got canceled on YouTube? Shane Dawson, who had a podcast, <laughs> right? Who well, this guy had a, um, I, I don't know too much about him, but I know when his pod has had a lot of different entertainers throughout the years that we know go on there and say crazy problematic shit from their time, um, from their time being famous or their peak in the 2000s and in the, in the 90s or whatever have you. And the reason why that's so common, you see so many people like with still fucked up stories like that or they get in trouble or canceled or realizing things that they say are actually abusive or things they thought is because most of the people around the world around them, the society around them was giving them all the tools to think that shit is okay. And it's like, we never address like when, 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 when people want to talk about rape culture or the things that are the way that men and boys are social Socialized, or even women, though with all these women that prey on young boys and stuff like that, the way people are socialized to think certain things are okay or to to um, conduct themselves sexually in a particular way, people act like you're just fucking nitpicking and being annoying and being the moral police. Like they don't want to have that conversation. But then when someone manifests or acts out any of the things that we've given, quite literally given men and boys the tools to think is all right or where that comes from, everyone's like, abuser devil contempt blah blah and it's like that can be true that that that's what's happening but like let's take a step back and not just make it seem like it's a boogeyman like it's an anomaly that we can't do anything about because when you think that you can't do anything about and these are just these outliers people think they have nothing they can do but just throw people away and lock away the key rather than there are things that we can do as a society to understand where this is coming from and if you will constantly so men men to think they're supposed to be waiting for girls to turn 18 think about the times this was right those these were the same times where people were dying for liz for for hillary duff and lindsey lohan and they amanda would have, it's really <laughs> gross <laughs> they yeah. would have they had like the clock like they they did like uh, for when the olsen twins turned 18 i remember <laughs> i remember that Exactly. So if you make it normal from think about all the people that are growing up in that world where it is normal for them, they are socialized and grown up to believe. Yeah, as men, we could wait for these young girls, these teenage girls to turn 18. We can grooming was a normal so with some normal shit with no name to it that they constantly like. I just watched American Pie the other day and Jesus Christ. I <laughs> 
Jesus Christ. I was like, yo, no wonder. Like, this is what people were growing up on and thinking this is coming of age and just boys. In in the first American Pie, the fucking um, star of the boys, Stifler and them, they fucking set up the camera to record the girl uh, changing and masturbating and, and air it to the school. And the movies are like, yeah, this is quirky, this is cool. You know, it's just girl. a quirky comedy. Right? It's just, boy, it's just boys having fun. That, so if people... If people <laughs> But like that, that's the world they're growing in. That's what they're being socialized. Is it shocking that you would get situations where these men think it's okay for them to text a 17-year-old girl, a 16-year-old girl to be trying to groom and do all these different things? I just want, I want us to take some like responsibility, like everybody, like a mass responsibility in the society uh, that we are making. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, so Ole supports groomers, and I am anti-groomer, actually, just to be very clear. Um, but, no, I did... The thing that upset me was, you know, I think that Jake Bell's story and his whole... Everything about him in, inside of this documentary, um, you know, was pretty compelling as, some, as a person who had been abused um, and how that changed, you know, how that impacted them, changed their life. And it made me think of people uh, who go through the criminal system who were victims of abuse at a very, very young age and how much that can change the trajectory of their life. Th this isn't, I don't even think this is a hot take, but I know it will make some people unhappy, which is that I saw a lot of people talking about how they were angry at certain celebrities, and this isn't the first time that I've seen this, they were angry at certain celebrities for writing like character letters, mitigation letters for Brian Peck, the guy who did this to yeah. Drake Bell. And the thing about that is like, I am f obviously like, I support mitigation letters. I've had mitigation letters written for people that I've represented, right? It's a fundamental part of going through like the criminal system. Yeah. And I really don't think we want to start like, I don't think people understand that you don't want to create an environment and a society that says um, once we label somebody with something or once somebody does something really bad, that person should be basically killed. Like that person should be sworn off from society and killed even if they did something really, really bad. I'm saying like you, you don't want to go down that – road because i promise you that at first that road might seem like a great idea it will lead ultimately to the death and destruction of poor people marginalized people minorities like anybody who is is disempowered in our society that is fu fundamentally where that road leads here's the thing and and, and here's the thing right they don't want to hear you say that shit like something <laughs> like Something I have recognized is every single time people will follow us because they like, they follow us in theory, right? When they were following you, like, oh, they love us as pop leftist public defenders that are giving them this analysis of the criminal system in theory. We give them the theory and they love the theory. They love to say they subscribe to the theory. But anytime there's an actual real world case or something like this, an application, they want to fucking stone us to the wall anytime we try I to know. like <laughs> theory, right? Like that's always a problem. Um, but so I'm not shocked. That's what always happens, right? Like people will take cases like this and now they're like, oh my God, I'm against this and I'm against that. I, I have a slightly more nuanced take um, with this one because what often happens with this kind of, this specific kind of propaganda is people will look at a case like this where white men are receiving the benefits that the system intentionally sure. carved white men sure. and they will act like, like- he was He was only in jail for 16 months. He went to prison for 16 months. <laughs> system they will act like that's the criminal system being too lenient lenient um on these kinds of crimes when that is the criminal system intentionally being lenient on white men with white yes, men. yes 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 i want to be fucking clear like have they been anybody else had they been and any of them been some niggas they were in jail locked up like like just off the fact that those things weren't being the one guy with the ten thousand pieces of porn that could have been handled as a there was no hands tied in propaganda they always whenever they're feeding propaganda in the media it always presented to you as though the police or the courts couldn't do something like they needed like there wasn't enough mechanisms in place that they didn't have enough power so that people get outraged and they they basically start lobbying for the system to have more power to do shit that it already could do if they mm -hmm. wanted to lock those niggas up and throw away the fucking key they could have. 
Yes, Let me be yes. clear. The reason why they weren't is because they are white men and exacerbated by them being white men with money. So I think that's important because it's like when you look at people start talking about all the leniency letters and this is the next thing. The reason why you're seeing all these people show up and be willing to stake their name and put their claim in the in the court, even give a fuck about those leniency letters, is because them some white guys. So, right, 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 right. So I I, I wanna I wanna mention that there. Then as it pertains to the letters, all right. I, I've written a leniency, a leniency letter. I wrote a leniency letter in college for my uh, college boyfriend who had abused me. Um, and I remember when I wrote that leniency letter, having like, man, the man abuses me. I write a leniency letter for him and his family and his friends were still fucking mad at me. Frat brothers mad at me because <laughs> it, in the letter, I wrote him a leniency letter, but I didn't lie for him in the leniency letter. I said that he did do it. He had issues. I was like, he had issues. He doesn't need to be criminalized. That's not going to help him. He needs therapy. He needs help. He needs to not have this like, you know, I, I wrote a legitimate, honest letter. And I say that to you can do that. So I think what the problem for me is not that they wrote leniency letters, although I fully agree with you that it's a problem when immediately take the position that you're not allowed like that's the thing that happens all the time anytime anyone's accused of anything or people just become they don't even have to be accused of a fucking crime they just have to become unlikable in the court of public opinion everybody acts everybody in their real life and their own and their support system should cut them off and i hate that shit i'd be like what do you think is going to happen if you th if you take everybody who you think is bad or you think doesn't handle their emotions well already or you think are abusive and you isolate them from community and their support systems? What? How do you think that helps anybody like everybody has this like punitive, visceral, like revenge um, uh, mind rather than any like any interest in the collective good? But anyhow, mm -hmm. my problem with their letters when I was looking at the letters is it's not like these people were like. Like they could have write, written anything they want, but those motherfuckers were there saying, "Oh, the child tempted them. The child must have been giving them temptation." <laughs> I didn't read. I didn't read the letters. <laughs> Alex, if you read the motherfucking letters, me and my boyfriend. I Paul, didn't read the letters. <laughs> <we're> like, <laughs> guys, I didn't. I didn't read the letters, guys. Yo, James, James Marsden. I saw them, them, them whacking him on Twitter, and they need to whack him the fuck again. My favorite tweet that I saw was like, someone was like. They were like, I was wondering why James. You Marsden saved me. You saved me right now, Ole, because I didn't read those fucking letters. <laughs> <laughs> and people, people are like reading them, and probably some people probably read them and heard me say that. And we're just like, <gasps> Alex, <gasps> where do you? Those motherfuckers were in the letters talking about he must have tempted tempted him. Oh shit! I didn't read that. <laughs> I didn't read that. These six bitches were, and they're like, surely he suffered enough. He must have been tempted. He all right, been... all right. Never mind, guys. Never mind. Throw away the key. <laughs> no, they they got. I really like what they had to say about James Marsden because people were like, um, they said, I used to wonder why James Marsden didn't have the career he deserved, and now I realize that he does. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know, also I think it's worth pointing out that James Marsden's dickhead was in a movie. He was in Hairspray with Amanda Bynes. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in that movie. I said, look at his fuck ass. Bitch ass nigga, like bitch ass, like bitch ass three. There was so many of them on the list. The one, um, oh my gosh, I need to get the whole list uh, of people they had on there because them highlighting what the substance of the letters is crazy. Like, and and also you don't have to. I'm not gonna hold you. Like, there's a difference between like I don't know being a defense attorney and being a lay person, right? Being a regular person, like I don't believe in um a certain level of condemnation for a defense, like at all for de defense attorneys who represent people, unless you are representing a white supremacist, because fuck them and this, they're not who they're not who was made who are in mind when they were kind of coming up with Gideon versus Wayne's right. It's, it's not about them, okay? <laughs> They're not who in mind and they're not who is being punished by the system. They're who the criminal system protects. So to me, representing a white supremacist is some shit you need to defend on your own personal fucking character. Don't put that on the goddamn profession or anything like that. But it's different to be a regular person and whip out Microsoft Word to, to start writing a leniency letter for a nigga you know was raping a child. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, Alex, I promise you are one of my good friends. If somebody told me what I was <laughs> And you said to me, okay, lie me. I, hold on. They're not lying on me. <laughs> I did, in fact, sodomize this 15 year old boy. I'd be like, you actually have to get the fuck around me. You actually have to stop talking yeah. to me. I'd, Aaron, get him off this show. This show is called <laughs> Only. <laughs> like, I'm not writing a fucking letter for you, and I'm damn sure if I'm writing it, I'm going to say to the court, 
dare court. My friend Alex is extremely sick. He's unwell. He's sick. He's sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, no, that's true. Gonna, true, true. You should have him tested for combat. In fact, I would shame the court. I'd be like, you are. You should be ashamed of yourself for trying to criminally prosecute somebody who's obviously so mentally sick in the head. He yeah, is yeah, mentally yeah. unwell. But what I wouldn't write is surely that little boy was tempting Alex. Yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy. They need to be stoned. In fact, something. <laughs> a little more like i was like i'm telling you i was sitting in the room like i hate effective propaganda like i'd be in the house like sometimes like you be you be watching propaganda and like it, it hit you for a second you feel like this through mm, lock them up yeah yeah <laughs> and, yeah, and like this is now i know this is good i'm like this propaganda is good because if i feel like lock them up but speaking of who needs to be locked up and enough people aren't talking about it for me Drake bell's mother yeah really? she fucked what? up really against when people be like oh blame the parents the parents were no lock that bitch up no <laughs> lock her the fuck up there's nobody else like people are talking about brandy's mom in the documentary like brandy shit my brandy's mom is not the worst like because brandy's mom didn't call the police oh god forbid brandy's mom didn't believe in the police at least brandy brandy's mom got brandy to fuck away from that nigga when she saw that one email for drake's dad to tell that bitch that man is a fucking pedophile weirdo under no circumstances do you leave my son with that pedophile and she it almost came off to me like she had drake with him out of spite like to spite the father like oh i have control now like you had no interest you took the, the father for me and management you took it knowing that you don't have the time energy or interest to invest in this kid's career like that and watch him and now you it felt like she was trying to spite him like replace his father figure with this fucking freak show freak ass freaky frog ass man his daddy done warned you about and then you mean to tell me i was like she know why she didn't fucking show up for this goddamn documentary because she needs to just like come outside we're gonna jump you miss what <laughs> What? That's so crazy to me that you repeatedly like that's not somebody gonna tell you. So you mean to tell me your your son's fucking girlfriend's mom could be like, hey, this isn't seem fucking normal. Perhaps in this 15 year old one, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. Let me keep let me keep standing my it's crazy with this man. Jail her. It's red it's red flag after red flag with with all of this stuff. It's, it? It's, it is that's that's probably i mean that's the most shocking part is that they were writing everybody is just saying oh dan <laughs> everybody in the documentary is like dan schneider made me eat two pints of ice cream for three hundred dollars or dan schneider would make me yell inappropriate things out in the office and then we would write a sketch where a child used the name of like a gooch uh as you know like P penelope taint for uh the amanda show but we were just we just thought he was being silly also he liked going in the hot tubs with the kids and you know and i think it's and it's, it's also funny to me i'm like you know god bless the the hearts of the two white women talking about their their employment discrimination but i what i always think is so funny is it's like all right you're hearing about the plight of these two white ladies like oh, we're the only two white ladies but i don't see a black staff writer to be found you know what i mean they're but this story i'm like <laughs> they're like they're like show the plights of these two well, we white ladies. we knew he was racist we knew he was racist the picture of that they, you know that giant ass picture everybody they kept going back to <laughs> yeah. and you were looking for the black people and you're like there's no black people here <laughs> fucking room and i was like that's really like a testament to how like it goes in real life discrimination and oppression it's like you you hear about the white ladies plight of not receiving equal pay blah, blah blah the black people can't even get in the fucking room and what i thought was so interesting is they could take the time to really like highlight and focus and give some energy to to these white ladies white women and which is real i'm not taking that from them if that is valid their employment discrimination and all that shit is absolutely real and legitimate but i was like y'all can give that energy but y'all gliding over the fucking racism they're like Whoa! yeah all right, we gonna jump from them, ladies. Jump over the black kids. Jump over the black kids. All right, land on 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 Drake and everything that's going on over here. Um, no, that shit was that shit was crazy. That that was absolutely absolutely fucking bonkers, bananas. But yeah, they got a lot. I was like, if somebody ever got a, if somebody ever had to be locked up before we get to abolition, it's it's definitely these motherfuckers right here and Drake's mama. <laughs> Drake's mama gotta go. 
And it makes me wonder too, when you, here's the thing, right? The documentary came off as, as illuminating as it was, or as outrageous as it was. It's the first time, like one of the first documentaries I watched where I'm very aware that I'm getting literally a drop in the bucket to what, to what the fuck. Sure. Was yeah, of course. Uh, of course. You only could get a handful of people to even participate in this. And it lets you know, if they were saying, you know, there were certain favorites and the favorites are clearly getting abused the worst because the, the, the biggest star they could get to participate was Drake. Oh, yeah. And you know, also, like, Ari- oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm and, like, and, imagine with Ariana, Amanda, well, Ariana Bar- Grande. The, I mean, the Ariana Grande footage of her doing stuff is so gross. It, it's yeah, it's just like patently, it, it's so disgusting that they were making a child do this, and she's probably the most one of the most famous people. Also, a uh, 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 Keenan. Keenan yeah. also was on all that. So, like, he was there in a lot of these years. Yeah, um, yeah. But, you know, it all worked out because Dan Schneider got $7 million in 2018 or 2017, and he is now living his best life. So it all worked out. Oh, and we have, we have to talk about um, sick-ass Disney hiring Brian Peck after that because, you know Oh, why? my God, I forgot. Oh, my God. You know why? Yeah, so... What- Okay, Remember? yeah. So people, Brian was, Peck, th- that's definitely the worst part. That's definitely the worst part, I think. Uh, or it's like one of the worst parts of this is that he gets out of prison for the stuff that he does to Drake Bell as a child and somehow instantaneously is like working again with in like with children in Hollywood. <laughs> And, and, and again, let me tell you why I think that's relevant too because I remember months ago, I, I wish people, I think this should be, it's not going to be, but I, I, it should be a testament to people to kind of check their power social relationships in the way that they assume. Like people have this tendency and they still do it like on a mass level to anybody who is famous or is perceived as successful or who has visibility or who's on something. People like, oh, they're having the best life. They have been there. They have it made. I can bully them. I can this. I can talk about them any kind of way. Blah 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 blah. People have no level, and 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 I. Know, it doesn't matter how many times I tweet this out. I never get less engagement or less consent than when you try to tell people to treat fucking celebrities and stuff like they're human beings. Because I remember months ago, or sometime last year, when there was a, the anniversary of some episode. Um, the day, the day that there was some episode of Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, it, it, it had a future date that came up in real life finally. And everyone was like mad because Cole and Dylan Sprouse didn't do anything to celebrate the day. And they were like, it was like viral on Twitter, b- bitching and moaning about how, oh, they could at least do that for their fans. And I was like, fuck y'all. Do you not know that Dylan and Cole Sprouse left Disney under like, we never want to work here again. We've had bad experiences. Our life has not been great. And when you think about that, and now that Brian Peck is someone who went, was working on the fucking sweet life of Zach and Cody. It, it, it makes you wonder what the fuck is like, it's not just Nickelodeon. It's not just this one set. It's not just Dan Schneider. Like I want people to focus on the systemic reality of what must be happening here. And I think it also, it's like, these things should take moments for us to recognize. Like just because there's glamor in your mind that you associate with Hollywood or entertainment does not change the fact that these are fucking jobs. The same way that you have jobs and discrimination and abuse is happening on jobs in real life and jobs are unpleasant and people are regular people going through life. It's the same way for these people. Their life, they're not like less deserving of compassion or humanity or investigation as to what their circumstances might be just because they're on your TV. Because, like, does this not tell us that now? At least I don't get molested at my job is for now or at least so far i haven't gotten molested no that i asked yeah, but speaking of those things <laughs> okay. it's funny that reckoning happens right when uh diddy is currently oh my diddy. god oh my god yes this is huge news in the world of black people business yes is it not? Yeah. <laughs> this is black people's business what's happening ole it, <laughs> i need to know this wait, is such wait, wait wait i heard i'm um, so i'm already interrupting you I, I'm so sorry. I'm interrupting you during black people business. <laughs> I heard that they haven't caught him yet. Is that true? Oh, well, as of right now, as of today, when we're recording, they haven't caught him yeah. yet. Okay. If you, uh, if you have not been paying attention to what's been happening to Diddy, let me just give you the quick update. So a few months ago, uh, Cassie sued Diddy. Cassie did, sued Diddy for a litany of like abuse and sexual abuse that she alleged happened to her while she was with him. She, the, the, within less than 24 hours of her uh, initiating the civil lawsuit and telling the press, he settled that. That was, <laughs> like, he settled it in the dead of night, like Friday, like in 
end of a Friday night. He open was line. on it. He was on it instantly. He was like, get the fuck out of there. Settle that shit now, right? But that didn't stop like a bunch of other cases and lawsuits that started coming out against him under the Adult, Adult Survivors Act. And so that was pretty much the beginning of the reckoning um, for Diddy. And I want to say this, because I did a lot of coverage when this Diddy shit happened, trying to like, you know tell people Diddy is wrong as fucking guilty as fucking how we should talk about and analyze this. And I had said that I did not think that this would be some big reckoning for Diddy. I thought Diddy would be fine. I was obviously wrong. Okay? <laughs> obviously I wrong. mean, I think, I think it's fair for you to make that assessment. He's a super rich, famous person who's pretty insulated and very powerful. So it makes yeah. sense that you would think, yeah, there's not going to be any consequences for this guy. Yeah, he's been getting away with, with, with shit for this. he forgot. He forgot that he was a black man. And, and they and they getting that ass, okay? Because they're here to remind him. Because so then today, he and Can I say that? I'm sorry. Am I allowed to say it? No, go ahead. You said it. We're, we're done. It's, it's there. It's in there. It's not getting out of it. So, did he? What is what is really diabolical about what's happening to Diddy right now today as we speak? So, so the FBI, no, Homeland Security. I think that I think that is important. People are really enjoying that part about it. Homeland Security raided two of Diddy's homes, not one but two. They they raided one in Florida and one in LA. Now here's what I think is fucking crazy. Diddy is at neither home. Diddy nowhere to be found because they've showed that Diddy's private jet took off earlier today and he's in the Caribbean. He's expected to like land in, I think, Bermuda, but they don't they don't even know if he's on board in the flight. But what I think is funny, that means Diddy knew this was coming and he left each and every one of his children. At the home. <laughs> That's the crazy part. It's like at the LA raid, you see, first of all, the LA raid, uh, it's they raided one of Diddy's homes in LA that he's actually he has in one of his daughter's names. But his sons, Justin and King, uh King Combs were at the property. Like they were they were had they show TMC shows them being handcuffed, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're arrested. We don't know how many people they sure. took several they could be being questioned or what have you. But they did put them in handcuffs and they I, by the way, I don't know what the extent of what the Diddy allegations are, and obviously I'm a, I'm against. I I I believe that Diddy's that Diddy has done whatever he's being accused of. However, I don't think any of that <laughs> just explains why they need to fucking send SWAT to his house. Yeah. Arm. What point? Because it's cool. Because they love it. They love that shit. I mean, this is like the only time they get to use their, you know, hundred million dollar vehicles and <laughs> and, and uh, vans. That- and that's the thing, right? I hate when people are so busy, like, enjoying the fact of who it's happening to and stuff that, like, no one's going to bother to point out the unnecessary level of, like, that's not necessary. His children did not need to be fucking have a bunch of SWAT come in with fucking sure. acid guns and hold them up. Like, that's a scary thing. They're all watching on TMZ, like, and, like, it's right. okay. That's not necessary. Like, I, I don't believe that that's necessary. But anyhow, that's what they're doing. But what I find interesting, necessary or not, is that Diddy left all his fucking children. <laughs> left them fucking blowing in the wind. Got on got on the jet and said, <laughs> he said I'm getting the fuck up out of here. <laughs> so Diddy has flown the coast. They have not <laughs> Diddy yet. They believe his 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 private plane is scheduled to, to land in the Caribbean. He's going to the island with Tupac. Listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, did he going down? Did That's crazy. Like, apparently, they're getting him on like some sex, of the same charges, sex Rick trafficking Elliot. and stuff like that. Apparently, yeah. Yeah, they're someone gonna said <laughs> someone on Twitter said that he was going to bring his own handcuffs. <laughs> and oh my gosh, and like. <laughs> Oh, God. You know what's crazy? The tide's only turned on Diddy in terms of, like, the black community um, looking out for him because of all the gay allegations. That's what I hate. They don't actually care. <laughs> that's so funny. I mean, it's that's horrible, but it's pretty funny. No, they don't care about <laughs> sexual violence or the abuse or anything like that. All they care about is his sexuality, and that's the only reason you see so much, like... It's funny because one, I, I think it's worth pointing out, and I pointed this out before, the way all these black legacy publications and black blogs and all whatever aren't covering it. They are not giving the energy and you to covering this at all. They're trying to, it's basically like you see the industry trying to protect him with silence, like the black, mm. the black industry. And then the black community is just like making fun of his sexuality. That's all they want to make it about. And I also think it's worth adding when the Cassie suit dropped and when women have been accusing Diddy of abuse, 
there are all these people coming out to try to discredit them. Mm-hmm. Discredit them. Even when they immediately settled the suit, blah, blah, blah. They're trying to discredit the women. But the minute a, a, a lawsuit dropped where they allege things about his sexuality in it, that had nothing. Let me say this. There's one lawsuit that dropped a few weeks ago where it was it was really salacious. They included like pictures and shit into the exhibit of people. And it was clear it was a bunch of junk. Like it was like easily debunked a lot of a lot of the stuff in it. Like they were alleging different like male celebrities were having sex with Diddy and having sex with different men. And it, it was like easily verifiable because they were post posting like images and it was like the wrong person and the real people were like saying, no, 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 that's me, not this one. And yet. Even with like where there was obvious misinformation, because the people are so willing, they're willing to like call him gay. They're willing to like make jokes on that. They 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 want to make fun of Meek Mill and make fun of all these men off these allegations that are not substantiated in any way. Meanwhile, when there are substantiated allegations or real evidence put forward for abuse, for abuse, they don't give a fuck. But if there's an opportunity to call somebody gay and to mock them, suddenly they're they're so willing to accept that as, oh, the truth. They can accept when the men allege abuse. Yeah, it's true. It's true. When it's the it's women, it's, oh, what's, what's her agenda? What's her reason for coming forward? with? The- you got to ride for the boys. That's all. That's how it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> So this has been a, a wonderful episode filled with. Uh, <laughs> it's this is the fir- this is the second and also last episode. <laughs> uh, I know they're gonna people are gonna stop watching right at the part where I'm like, you guys, we it's it's mitigation letters are good, you know. Generally, we it's good that we have mitigation letters, they're and they're gonna be with- like. I I remember one I time. I can't believe he said this. I swear to you, I I, I they're gonna be little comments like someone left me a comment like this one time and told God. me they were crying they were gutted crying because there's some that because sometime i i would talk like i was a defense attorney like i am and they were like well i mean i know that you are a defense attorney but you need to learn to check that at the door and consider our feelings and stop it i was like you know the world's a complicated place guys bad things happen it doesn't mean we don't have empathy and understanding of what those bad things are we're just talking about these larger systems that are implicated also by giving blind powers to the state that's all. But anyway, to to speaking, prevent, don't look at these cases that involve rich and powerful men, often white, not in the case of Diddy, but rich and powerful men. And look at the leeway they are given by the criminal system because of who they are, which is the point. The criminal system, like people like to look at the criminal system, be taking it easy on rich people and be like, oh, see, we need more laws. We need this. It needs to be part of it. It's like, that's the fucking point. The criminal yeah. system, is prison and, like, the whole prison industrial complex is meant to police Poor people, poor people, poor black, usually black and brown, but also poor people across the board, poor white people. Yeah. Black. So it's meant, it's not a like mistake. It's a feature of the system to grant leniency and protection to rich people. So please do not be outraged about the leeway that you see your rich people get in and think, oh, that means we need to double down on the criminal system. That is proof of what we're always telling you, that the criminal system does not work the way you have romanticized it and you've been led to believe by the media. The criminal system is just there to lock up Broke ass niggas. That's my end rant. End rant. Oh, wait, wait. I just want to do the. Okay, there's one last thing I wanted to talk about, though. So, speaking of people that we love besides uh, P. Diddy, Governor DeSantis in Florida signed a bill. Uh, I believe he signed it today, um, which goes in to place next January in Florida. And the purpose of this bill is to prohibit children under the age of 14 from having social media accounts and effectively banning them and destroying their accounts for any kind of social media. However, obviously, that's not the whole story. That's just what it's sold as. But the bill is actually quite messy and most likely unconstitutional. Um, And it requires age verification, anonymous, anonymous age verification, which is used to basically take someone's ID and determine that they're above a certain age um, so that they can't access websites that are not just making adult content, right? Like we're not just talking about adult only type websites, but also anything inside of that kind of constitutional language that, yeah. a- that appeals to the purient interest, which in the law, you know, like in constitutional law is something that is 
wishy-washy you yes. know what i mean like what's like it's where the supreme court goes oh does something have artistic value or merit or scientific value versus being explicit um and this is something that the court has not really i mean like they defined it in the 70s uh and they created a test for it in the 70s called the miller test but it's not really something that you want the courts deciding right We're like lazy. i know she, I hate her. Hold on. I like Maisie because she needs a good dress recording. <laughs> Hi, Maisie. It's, it's hard she screams for you, and then when you bring her, she'd be like, what am I doing here? <laughs> she acts like she hadn't been screaming for you to get her. All right, sorry. She's being annoying. Basically, you know, this is a, there's been a series of restrictive laws that DeSantis has been passing in Florida. This is the newest one. And... They recently did this in Texas. They passed this law, and it's the reason that – well, there's a website that's an adult website where people have access to adults having adult times, and uh, they basically tried to pass something like this in Texas, and so a very popular adult website left Texas because of this. They are, they're no longer providing their services in the state of Texas. Um, and I, of course, think that every company should do this kind of stuff with these laws because yeah. – of how abusive it is. Um, and basically if you, uh, there are no criminal penalties as of yet, but there are civil penalties. Like they can charge, um, $50,000 per violation to providers. Um, they can charge, there could be like liability for letting minors have access to stuff, but also this is the most, maybe this is the most important part. Cause now I'm just ranting about this bill. Basically, what they mean is, and you and I have talked about this before, um, if you access something that they determine that, like, the conservative legislature in Florida determines is purient, like, LGBTQ, you know, informational stuff, content, uh, that can be determined to be for adults. So they can find these companies that are providing that kind of information. America is going. I, I – because – it is actually terrifying the amount of like government overreach you see them try because that's all this shit is about. All this is about is creating like, and you know what I hate when you talk to people and when you say to them that like these government, the government, whether it be Republicans, Democrats, it's mostly Republicans in the extreme way, unless you want to be talking about a cop city. But these more these these laws that you're seeing pop up is this very overt overt attempt to to create authoritarian like uh, that's what it is is trying to create the, all the control and the power in the hands of the government and it's like have you read the Gover have you read the giver have you read 1984 like that's where we're heading towards if you allow the government to be able to determine and, and legislate everything maybe able to control everything which you have access to and what i what i find frustrating is as somebody who like going to law school and even before that just studying poli sci and the amount of times people would try to like brainwash you into believing that the conservatives have some like legitimate school of thought that they're against to like, Oh, they're originalists. They're against judicial activism. They, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, they, the, they don't believe in, in, in big government. They don't want the government control and everything. But what is this? If not every one of those things, like of, of, of them actively trying to like gut your rights and, and take away, you know, and, and, and you know, it was, there's a, this is like something that you can't even it's just like the Supreme Court and your constitutional rights have become a farce because it's like the Supreme Court had long decided that it's parents who have the right to determine the 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 race, the, the upbringing of their children. Right. Like, that's a thing. We know this. But it's not like Republicans don't know that they're banking on these things, getting challenged and going to their Mickey Mouse Supreme Court that wants to gut rights. Like, so that's the problem is like, even though you have rights in place and these Republican legislatures are very clearly passing laws that are unconstitutional based on what your constitutional rights are as they exist they know that they have this mickey mouse court that is going to side with them and that's what they want they want you to challenge these things so that they can gut your rights and they've been doing it they're on a fucking roll so i don't even i don't even know what to say other than trying to get people to like wake up and stop fucking like being okay with these things and believing the false pretenses that they give you and i also wish that democrats and the left were calling them out on these things because it's like all those years you let Republicans gaslight you about big government and, and, and judicial activism and all of this shit, and you're just going to let this rock? 
you're gonna you're not gonna take this opportunity to spin their talking points on them about how parents should be who determine what their children can see. Like that's the thing, right? It's like whenever they're trying to justify why they should be bigots, right? Why people shouldn't learn history, why you should keep a whole population of people fucking dumb and and keep them from knowing things in schools. Their argument is these are our children. I should yeah. be able to decide that my child is a fucking idiot bigot. That's my right. <laughs> And then now when they want to fucking uh, control everything and legislate everything to death, it's like the children need protection. Clearly these fucking yeah. left. And I mean, it's so, it's, it's so nefarious because they always do it under the guise of this benevolent actor that cares about the most vulnerable people in our society, the children, when it's like the entire project, the, contri- the entire, uh, whatever you want to call it, like theo-fascist, you know, Christian adjacent uh, conservative project in the United States is meant to privatize everything, um, take away all women's rights and autonomy, and make it so that uh, no one is able to actually express themselves in any kind of way outside of their prescribed acceptable, um, you know, expression. So, and, 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 and yeah. you know that. And it becomes and it becomes incredibly clear that 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 is what the goal is when you think of it like that they don't care about protecting the most vulnerable among, amongst them because in the same breath that DeSantis is out here trying to pass a, pass this law he also just passed the law banning homeless people from sleeping in any public spaces in 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 Florida yeah. and that's uh, coming but I'll, I'll, I'll say that's going to be plenty popular in wealthy blue states as well because they're sick of seeing people who are living on the street and they don't want to see poor people actually and it's the thing that rich people complain about all the time and so it, it, it that's going to be coming well, everywhere the crazy thing is like i don't even want to say just that rich people complain about because not that many fucking people are rich the amount of people yeah. who have this see poor politic and act like oh we're rich we're doing well we want to see broke people and blah 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 and this and the next thing and they're not working and they're doing drugs and i want them off like i saw i saw a guy today who follows me commented on my video explaining about this law in florida banning homeless spaces and he said something like oh they be sleeping on our summer properties or something shit why you gone and <laughs> i looked at this nigga this nigga has no summer property i was like it's aspirational it's aspirate. It's like people have people. <laughs> people will not align themselves with the people most fucking similarly situated to themselves because they yeah. rather believe in, in that they're going to reach some other point. It's like the average person in America lives paycheck to paycheck, including us. And we're attorneys who I know make more than the average person our fucking age. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean? Like even the broke attorneys doing better, and we're not. And we're paycheck to paycheck okay if, all, if i broke if i broke a leg right now and my dog got sick and i mean i don't know a dog my cat got sick all right got, that's it for me all right i'd be in a fake now you ever think <laughs> a little broke and one of your, your, your pets gets sick i'm like feels- this cat's gonna die <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't have the fucking money for this. I remember once being on unpaid leave, like not being able to work. And I remember my cat at the time got sick. I was like, Jesus Christ, who's paying for this? Where is the not money me. come from? So it's like, <laughs> it's mind blowing to see people act as though the majority of Americans are not living paycheck to paycheck and aren't one unintended bill away from being in the same situation as homeless people. So in the same breath, they're like, someone said this, I saw it on Twitter a couple days ago. Someone was like, why the fuck do squatters even have rights? And I think it was Mickey Candle that explained to them, like, for the same reason that you have, that they created leases to protect your broke ass from what these fucking landlords would do to you. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, Jay Gould, I mean, this is attributed to Jay Gould. I don't know if he actually said it, but he was like a railroad uh, entrepreneur, robber baron, basically, from the early 20th century. And he said you could pay one half of the poor to kill the other half, you know? So it's just like everybody has this, not everybody, but a lot of people in the United States have this idea of like, oh, I'm just a temporarily embarrassed poor person like i'm at, uh, you know i'm gonna be a millionaire eventually like it's coming my right. my big payout is coming it's not coming i just want you to know it's not coming guys you're right <laughs> like me while the american is like swimming in medical debt yeah or school or school debt like okay all right all right you want to call it you want to call it yes <laughs> let's wrap it up that's two aces in a row two aces yeah. in a row guys 
let me just say at the close of this episode, um, I take back the thing I said about the letters in this context. However, my point generally still stands, and please don't yell at me. I'm just trying to open your minds to the many possibilities of an ab- abolition framework, and they're, I love you guys. They're not going to yell at us because not enough of them are going to see it to do it. But- <laughs> If anybody put Someone's going to clip it. Someone's going to clip it. And they're going to put it on. Someone's going to clip it and they're going to put it on Twitter. And then my life is going to be over. If we in any way try to make the argument on Twitter, they would get us. They would pack us the fuck don't up. Don't clip it, guys. Please, don't, don't, <laughs> don't do that. clip it. Share the show, share the link, but not that clip. Thank you. Don't, don't do that. To, don't do that to Alex. Okay, they'll cancel him. Please. And he's like, Nothing to save him. <laughs> I know. They've been wanting to do it. They're yeah. wanting to. He just said they want me. They- <laughs> <laughs>